And if you think about it, if you look at the websites that we've done, and then you think about some of the larger, more populate, uh, popular uh, sites on the web, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a, of a disconnect, all right? Because our pages are what are called static. Now, what does the word static mean in this context when I say they're static pages? They don't change, right? In other words, if you were to view your first assignment, it would look exactly today as it did the day you turned it in. And that's probably true for every single assignment you've done in this class. But obviously, web applications, websites, the popular websites, aren't like that, right? In other words, go and bid on an item on eBay and come back tomorrow and look at the exact same, bookmark the page and come back tomorrow. It's likely to look different, all right? Now, do you think eBay has something going on where as they're somehow magically keeping track and sending a web developer to go and manually edit the HTML page every time someone makes a bid? Of course not. Likewise with Google, all right? Google, you go to the same page, you can search on anything, all right? And you're calling the same page, yet the results are different. In fact, the results are different based on a number of different things. The, the results are different based on the terms that you put in. If you put in Asian restaurant versus Italian restaurant, you'd get different results, all right? It even goes beyond that. If me in the Cleveland area puts in Italian restaurant and my brother in New York puts in Italian restaurant, he's going to see a different set of results than I am. All right? So obviously, those pages aren't static. If two people can do the same thing, accessing the same pages, and they're seeing different results, something different, something more than HTML is going on. And that more bit is server-side scripting, all right? I'm going to draw my diagram. I think I have drawn it previously. Um, I, I, I draw it in most of my classes, so I'll, I'll draw it. And then we'll talk about the impact of server-side scripting in the, in the in the equation. Normally, if you have a plain old web page, here is the client. And the client could be someone sitting at a laptop, a desktop, or someone using a mobile device. They make a request for a page. That request travels through the internet which I drew as a cloud long before people used the phrase cloud computing, <laughs> all right? The reason I draw it as a cloud is we don't really care as web developers what happens in there. That's a, that's a networking thing, and we don't care about that. Somehow, your request bounces around through the network of all these computers, but it ends up getting sent to the proper server. So if I were to type in www.cnn.com, my request would travel through the internet, somehow get to CNN's web server. Pardon me? Magic, yeah, exactly. For this, for this class, we'll consider that to be magic. Now, our request includes a few things. One of the things our request includes is our IP address. Every computer on the internet has an IP address, and that says, like, who made the request so that the server knows who to send it back to. So, in the case of a static page, the server's job is very easy. The server pulls up the static page and sends it to the server. The analogy I give is this is like a, uh, a server in McDonald's. You order a Big Mac, what does the server do? Turns around, finds the bin that the Big Macs are in, 
pulls out a Big Mac and gives it to you. All right? Because, you know, I mean, the whole thing is, is that they have an assembly line where they crank these out and they're sitting there and they're, the server's job, the person that takes your order at the register's job is simply to find what you asked for and give it to you. The server themselves doesn't do anything special. All right? So, two key words in web development, request and response. A request is a client asking the server for something. A response is what the server delivers back to the client. The response is going to be in the form of a web page, which is going to contain HTML, CSS, and we haven't talked about it yet, but potentially some JavaScript. The response could consist of multiple files, right? Because images could be included in there too. And the CSS could be in a separate file or files. All right. So the response could be a package of things. But typically it's going to be a web page with some other files associated with it. Now with static pages, everyone gets the same thing. It's like you order a Big Mac, the person behind you gets a Big Mac, you get essentially the same Big Mac. All right? Now, that's how the web was originally sort of vision, and that's the first sort of applications of the web. And, and that was great at the time, the idea of hyperlinking and be able to click on things and go to different pages and so on was, was a wonderful thing. But it really was essentially, um, people would call it like brochureware or like an electronic brochure, all right? In other words, it was on the computer, and it was great because you could click around links and you could go all different kinds of directions. But really, you were simply getting completed pages and you're looking at the content. And if you came back tomorrow, unless someone manually changed them, you get the exact same page. There was nothing to differentiate if you were to look at it versus if I were to look at it, all right? What really made the web explode into the powerful tool that it is was the ability to write server-side scripts. And when I say scripts, scripts, programs, roughly the same thing. All right? And you can think of the script, if we're going to continue the food analogy here, to be not a finished sandwich or not a finished document that is sent to the user, but instead is a recipe for creating a document. All right? And a recipe, you know, if you don't have a finished sandwich and you have a recipe, you can vary up that recipe a little bit based on what the customer wants. So what sandwich place might be a good analogy for server-side scripting? Well, Burger King have it your way? I would say Subway, all right? Because if you order something, if you order a certain sandwich, you have to give your input, all right? That's part of your request, is giving your input. In other words, you order a, a, a turkey club sandwich. They're going to ask you, what kind of bread do you want it on? Um, do you want it toasted? What kind of cheese do you want? What kind of vegetables do you want? What kind of dressings do you want? And therefore, you come in after me. We could both order turkey clubs. And either of our turkey clubs might nauseate the other person, right? Because if you got yours with onions on it, I'm going to be like, ugh, that's horrible. Whereas maybe you don't like, you know, mayonnaise on yours or something like that. All right? So the idea is in Subway, they don't have completed sandwiches sitting out there. And if you think about it, that would be ridiculous. That would be impractical and impossible. That they would have one of every one or more one of every combination of sandwiches that you could order. So in other words, they'd have a turkey club on wheat with tomatoes, lettuce, and mayonnaise. Then a turkey club on white 
with lettuce, tomato, and onions, then, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It's like saying Google has a search page for every single possible thing that you could ever search for. Well, that doesn't make sense. I mean, that's absurd. What do they have instead? They have a recipe. They have a process. They have a program that can crank out search results pages. The thing is, is that's not done in HTML. That's done in programming languages, program sets of instructions. It can be in PHP. That's one popular programming language. It could be in ASP.NET and C Sharp. It could be done in Java. It could be done in a whole bunch of different ways, but the process, the general process, is still the same. And that is, in the case of server-side scripting, the web server doesn't have a finished page. The static pages here are finished pages. The scripts are recipes or instructions or programs. And when the user makes a request, the server executes these instructions and it might do things like interact with a database. It might do things like look where this request is coming from. And it might look at form data. All right. Form data is where the user supplies inputs via what are called form controls. All right. And that input that you type in gets sent to the server and is used in the server in forming the response. All right. Just like when the server asks you at Subway what kind of bread you want, you provide a response. All right. I see what you're getting about Subway being a little different. If you would think of Subway, a Subway where they asked you all the questions up front and you gave a sheet, that would be more like a, a server. But again, it's an analogy. Analogies are never perfect, so you get the idea. The idea is, is that the process occurs with some input from the user. It doesn't simply make a request and you get a response. And if you think about this, almost any web page that you think about is um, going to be a dynamic page. Angel's a dynamic page, right? We, both, we all go to the same page in Angel, but your page looks different than mine. Why? Because I have logged in with my user ID and password. I've used a form to provide some input, all right? And um, you have put in your input. So you're going to see the classes you're enrolled in. And what's more, even the classes of yours that I teach, we're going to have different privileges. You can't grade stuff, all right? Um, actually, if, my, if I continue to be behind in grading, I may allow you to grade stuff, all right, uh, just to help me catch up. But we'll, we'll give it another week or so. Hopefully, now that I'm feeling a little better and, and most of my issues are behind me, I'll be able to really make up some ground. At least that's how it works in theory. All right. So, based on the input, the page looks and acts different. All right. I, for example, I log in Angel. I have a, a section to go in and grade stuff. You don't. You can submit to a Dropbox, but you can't grade an entry in the Dropbox. And that's all based on the fact that the page isn't a static page that gets sent. There isn't a static page for CISS 216 that you get sent to. There's a dynamic page that looks at who you are and gives you privileges based on that. And in fact, only creates the link if you're enrolled in the class. And if you try to access the link without being enrolled, it will tell you you're not enrolled in this class. You know, if you were to say log in angel, bookmark the page, all right, and then log off. If the next person tried to log in and then went to your bookmark, it wouldn't let them because it would recognize that that person is not, assuming that person was not enrolled in the class. All right. One of the key ways, one of, but not the only way, that 
server-side scripts get parameters to make them dynamic is through the user input or forms. There's other ways, as I mentioned. Time of day. You could have a web page that, based on the time of day, showed something different. I'm thinking like a TV network. You know, if you wanted to see, if you went to HBO's page, you know, it could look, first of all, to see that we're in Eastern Standard Time Zone, based on our IP address. It could look and say, well, here it is, what, 1120, all right? And therefore show from 11 o'clock to 3 p.m. what is going to be on HBO. All right. If I came to the same page, all right, in 6 o'clock tonight, or at 6 o'clock tonight, it would, it would show me again from maybe 6 to 9 p.m. Or if I was in California and I came right at this moment, it would either adjust the times or show me HBO West or whatever, however they have that set, set up. All right. Could be based on time of the day, could be based on geographic location. All right, let's look at an example. Oh, before we look at an example, let's talk about the dilemma we face in this class. The dilemma we face in this class is that we do not cover writing server-side scripts. All right, that's a whole... That's a whole nother ball game. That's a whole nother, actually several classes here. So what are we going to do? We want to learn HTML forms, but we don't know how to write server-side scripts. We're going to use someone else's. All right. Now that's okay. No, that's not cheating. I was going to say that that's that's definitely not cheating because people that write these scripts oftentimes will uh, make it so that you can do that. So that you could include, for example, a search or a map quest or a whatever on your page by putting in parameters. You know, you've, you've probably seen like a restaurant will say, enter your address and click on this and it will show you a map of how to get to their restaurant. You're essentially writing the form and sending it to their server-side script. So it's not like uncommon to do this. All right? So we're going to do this, and we're going to do it with uh, Bing instead of Google because it's a, little e it's a little easier to demonstrate with Bing. I normally am definitely a Google search person, uh, but again, Bing uh, makes it a little easier for us to demonstrate these things. So let me go and let me download the example. Before we go on to this, I, I used to have as an assignment in one of my classes to find examples of static and dynamic pages. I got rid of that example because it's almost impossible to find a page that's totally static. For example, this page sort of looks like it's totally static, but looky here. You can go and get your picture taken with the Easter Bunny later today or today. Three dollars. <laughs> All right. And so even though this page isn't completely dynamic, in other words, if we came back tomorrow, this would be the same, and, and this slideshow is sort of dynamic, but it's sort of not. Um, it, it typically, I think it scrolls between two or three options. All right. Yeah, why do I never make the, why do I never make the, yeah, I don't know. I probably don't want to scare people away. Again, there I type that in and I get a result of PHP, not anything else. And again, to my point, Italian restaurants. Notice right off the bat the recommendations, Italian restaurants in Cleveland, near me, Canton, Ohio. If I just search for Italian restaurant, though, 
we will get in restaurants that are in for the most in our area. A couple slipped in. Here's one in Baltimore and one in Miami. Yeah. But notice here, Little Italy, the Cleveland area, Elyria, North Ridgeville, and so on. So things is happening here. Either all the best Italian restaurants are in this area, in the whole world, even if you went to Rome, even if you went to Rome, it would recommend the Olive Garden on West River Road. All right. That's one possibility. The second possibility is somehow the web server knows where we're at and knows to make our results more relevant, it's going to include um, things that are close to us. And this actually, this is a fascinating topic. And, and there's actually, believe it or not, there's actually social um, implications to this. For example, um, there is, the, the, the number I remember, and again, it could, my memory could be bad uh, or uh, it could have changed by now or, or something, but I've heard there's like 19 different factors that Google uses in, in doing your search results. Remember Google. Remember Google. How many of you have Gmail accounts? All that stuff is fair game for you to, for, for them to customize your search results. All right? Um, how many of you watch uh, YouTube videos? Yeah, all of you. You know what? That's probably fair game too, because Google owns YouTube. Um, if you have searched via Google, they have your search history if you're logged on. So they could use that. The, the, there's a social problem actually associated with that, if you think about it. Not to get political, but if a person is constantly searching for either information about to simplify things, right-wing politics or left-wing politics, Google's results will be customized for them in the future. Which means what? Means they're going to get more of the same. So people are less likely to get a diverse set of viewpoints. Google tries to give you what it thinks you like. Which on one level is a noble goal, right? Yeah, it, it makes sense for them to show me Italian restaurants in this area because I probably would like to go in this area and not have to drive down to, you know, to uh, uh, Houston or whatever to find a good Italian restaurant. However, when you talk about like public policy and opinions, it's not always the best thing on a societal level to feed people stuff that they like. The old preaching of the converted thing, all right? And it's funny to see discussions, you know, if you have some liberal and some conservative friends, like, and you follow on Facebook, just, they never seem to be citing the same sources, you know. And it, 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 it you know, and that's all I'll say, again, without politicizing the discussion here. The decisions are, have impacts beyond choosing what restaurant you go to. And the bad part of it is, is no one knows what's in the secret sauce that Google uses to determine the search. All right? It's not transparent. Why is it not transparent? It's not transparent because that's where they make their money. All right? So they ain't not giving away the, the secrets of that. And yet, you don't know how you can be subtly, unintentionally, not even necessarily manip maliciously manipulated by the way their algorithm works and does that. So, wow, I don't want to end this class on a downer, but... Yeah, yeah, wow, hard to get happy after that, huh? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is really iffy ethics there. <laughs> yeah.
This is uh, this is of a well injury. The I'm on the ball. I have my example posted beforehand. Yeah. See yesterday's an. Certainly one of the main ways that a user interacts with that server-side script provides information. The most obvious way is through the form data. In other words, you log on to Angel, you get a form when you go in, a place to put your user ID and password. All right? That's a form that's interacting with that. You go to Facebook and log on, a Google search, an Amazon search, any of those kinds of things, you're interacting with the server and the server is customizing the results largely in part by what you type in that form. So here's a real simple example of this. And again, I'm using Bing's search engine to do this. All right? This is about the most basic example that we can come up with. All right? Where I have a single text box and a submit button. All right, that's it's like the simplest form that you could possibly have, just about. All right, so let's go in and let's do a search for something. PHP. All right, I click submit, and there I get their results that show me a list of things that start or, or that that are relevant for PHP. If I type in Italian restaurant. Again, I see list of Italian restaurants also in this area, so they do the same sort of thing, kind of. They gave me a list of the best ones in Dallas, Texas, which is an odd choice. The yeah, the original ones on the top are this one is, I think. This is this is in Cleveland, but this is like the third one on the list. That's weird. And then wiki is like, a, wiki for Italian cuisines is a fourth entry. This is why you always use Google. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So let's look at the code of this. And again, we're going, to, we're going to expand on this example. And we're going to talk about the accessibility implications of this example. But this will be a good start point to, to get a good overview of the way forms work within HTML. So let's go in here and edit it. And again, for I didn't spend much time stopping it. I just have the uh, HTML. The form tag goes around your controls. Typically, even if you have several form controls. So think, for example, if I go to a web page to register for a site, I go to register for an account on Amazon, for example. Let's go and do that. New customers start here. Okay. No is a or so text box. All right. Now we may even get all right. But we have 
six fields. Think that there's a different text box? No. Envelope. Everything you want to send it to, to the server. All right. So there one bag that would contain this, 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 and the box. All right. So the first example is pretty simple. We all have a couple within the form tag. No form tag has two attributes to it. All right. What's an attribute again? We talked about these, but it, 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 it's good to um, review. An attribute is additional information about the tag. Remember, with a link. A link is an A tag. But that's not right. It's not enough to say we have a link. We got to say a link to something. A link to what? All right. So we have to specify the what we're linking to. Well, we have to specify two attributes with a form. A method and an action. You have two choices for method. All right. Get and post. Get passes the data as part of the query string. Post the data a different way, not the string. Puts it in a different place. Still sends a data server, but puts it in a different place. Now let me see, let me show you what I mean by query string. So Click submit. No. Is my search term. All right. So that's how page one gets the data to page two. It's part of the URL. And again, in this case, it's a simple form. We only have one thing. All right, but it would be the same if we had more than one thing. Would have Q equals HTML5. We might have a language equals English or French or whatever. Items on the query string are in these what are called ordered pairs. All right, we have the name of a value, a name of a field an equal sign, and a value. So Q is the name of the field. Q standing for query. This is what we're searching for. The equal sign, HTML5. So HTML5 is what we are querying for, what we are asking for. The query string starts with the question mark. So everything after the question mark is a query string. Items on the query string are separated by the ampersand. All right. So we have a second field here, which is actually our submit button. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But the submit button's name is go, and its value is submit. Now. <coughs> We could do this with the pop method, and we would not have values on the query string. So doing a password, for example, would be one case where you'd want to use a post instead of a get, because then the password would not be uh, visible on the query string. There's other things as well. If there was more access a page, where sometimes accessed it via a form, 
gives you access to it via a link. It'd be easier to do that if you put the items on the query string. We're going to in this class, we're going to focus on the get method because simply it helps you as a student and helps me as a professor to demonstrate and to show that from A to B. All right. Let's see if it's still if I change it to post. It didn't work. All right. It means sent via the query string. Now, the action of the form is the script that we are sending our data to. You or you is create and the server side script. So if I'm creating a a form, so it created a form, the and I create the script form submits to that looks at the database and makes sure it's a, a legal user and that the password is correct and so on. So it's a unique situation here where I put the script but to figure out, gee, what to be called? Can I use post or do I have to use get and so on? And this is the name of that's getting called. So, if we look at the search and type in PHP, I forgot to change it, or I forgot to save it after I changed it. We can see the request. The action of the form. CPP form. That's that we're calling. In many cases, it's going to be up, so we don't have to put in the HTTP Bing. We would just put in the name of our script. But again, in this case, we're accessing another server. So that now named that. All right. It's named and match the names that are query string. Is the
and take the approach. actually did a redirect so we don't even get to see something else up there. Let's put Q there. Did I exactly I did a search keys and and some script I'm going to call and Really, the only two that are. 